Hello, everybody. I'm Peter Grant with Zaner Metals, and this is This Week in Metals. My colleague Peter Thomas is with me as usual, and uh, we, we took a little hiatus last week. I was uh, right. traveling and didn't have the, uh, we could have shot something, I suppose, but I didn't have the means to edit it and produce it and, and get it out to the masses. So, uh, so two weeks have lapsed, and uh, nothing's really happened. I didn't really miss much, did I? No, not a thing. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's a slight little movement in the market, you know, just new contract guys and everything all over the planet. But other than that, we're fine. You know? Oh, oh, well, you'll have to enlighten me. Yes. Um, what, uh, first, we start our shout outs. I want to shout out to Pam. Uh, as you know, I've been very close with them for decades and their product uh their bars especially that it, actually there was a picture of one of their bars as being found to be counterfeit in the chinese vaults which was stunning to me i would like all of our viewers to go to youtube and the ceo of pamp and i scott spitzer scott took time out of his day from running a multinational operation to sit down with me and show you how to spot a counterfeit bar and how someone who's running a large central bank could not spot a counterfeit bar is i will quote the honorable chairman ed moy of the united states mint and one of the nicest people i happen to know there must have been a few people involved in getting those bars in, and we'll we'll leave it at ed's quote and that is in bloomberg but uh, Scott and I did a, did something with a system that PAMP has designed called Veriscan. Veriscan. It is in uh, YouTube. You can download the Veriscan app and Veriscan video, both. They are designed by PAMP to make their bar counterfeit proof. Now, why China doesn't have one, we'll leave it alone. But you take your iPhone, you download your Veriscan app, you pick up your bar of Pamp Gold, you turn it over, you scan it with your iPhone, and it will tell you when that bar was poured, what it is, if it's genuine, who, you know when they made it. It is absolutely counterfeit proof and we owe it as a distributor of gold globally and to the group at PAMP who have worked so hard to prevent counterfeiting from occurring. I sat on the ICTA crew with them many years ago and in the battle against counterfeiting. So it's very disturbing to me as a distributor that someone would say that PAMP was involved in this. There is no way PAMP was involved in this. And any of you that do own PAMP material that aren't aware of Veriscan, please use it. It is just phenomenal. Yeah, and the it technology is amazing. Being taken advantage of, okay? It, it, it basically, just to, just to kind of uh, give a, a, a quick description of how Veriscan works, right. as the, the uh, PAMP bars are um, manufactured, Right. Uh, th they scan them. They scan the surface of the bar, and right. every bar is unique. It it is like a fingerprint. Yeah, there is no there is no two alike. They're like snowflakes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, and that uh, topography, if you will, of the bar like is that. then stored in the database. Right. And uh, if you scan a bar and it's in the database, it will uh, it will verify the bar for you. It's it's a great and amazing technology. It is amazing technology. I actually sat down with Jim Ryder and Scott at a uh, coin show not long ago. Jim Ryder, the head of the United States Mint, and as they were talking about the feasibility of even adapting that to the American system, I mean, it's just that phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's making great strides. Every legitimate company is Thank making you. great st strides towards um, counterfeit proofing. Yes. Uh, and there's there's different methods. The uh, Royal Canadian Mint uses a, a different method. That's true. Method yeah, that's and, right. They just came out with that. Thank um, you. Holograms, right, yep. embedded in the uh, in the coins and yeah. so forth. And we'll get to that point. Uh, but that's not to say that there there aren't 
counterfeit bars out there, but make no mistake, they don't come from uh, these well-known manufacturers. Right. Um, they're uh, typically the the thing that is counterfeited is the is the hallmark. Uh, yes. Of, um, so they 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 make a cord but, bar and. But if you're a vault manager, which is a very very prestigious position to hold, you aren't accepting bars without scanning them. It just is not happening. Right. Yeah. Right. So th thank you for your input, Pete. That was that was very helpful too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, so all right, I am up to date on what happened last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was uh, a, an amazing week. So let's start with what? gold. Uh, gold was up uh, almost 5% last week. Yes. Um, at, at one point, uh, it was nearly $100 higher on the week. So we set uh, a nine-year high in, in spot gold um, at uh, 1906.39 is the high that I saw. Uh, we haven't been that high since uh, we set the all-time high back in September of 2011. Um, it was the seventh consecutive higher weekly close last last week. Uh, so there's there's momentum here. Uh, oh, yeah. What what? So we're we're a stone's throw. I mean, we settled a little bit lower, uh, only about ninety dollars higher uh, on on the week. Um, but uh, we looked at the futures. Did you notice the contango is it's moving, baby? Yeah, 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 and uh, so what do you think uh, for 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 this week? We we going higher? Are we going to set new highs this week? Well, it's it's. I tell you what, it's going to be down to the opening in the Asian market. In my mind, yeah. I think that we're going to have a lot of professionals that have stops above previous highs, and if this thing decides to run, it could get very interesting because there's no resistance. There's there's nothing there. Then the algo you start guys talking, see the, yeah, you yeah. start talking big round numbers. What once you're in brand new territory? Yep. And the big next big round number is two thousand, obviously. And and it's what everybody's talking and and has been really since the beginning of the year. This is not a surprise. Yeah. The velocity's been the surprise. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, we'll 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 talk a little bit about velocity in just one second, Pete. <laughs> But um, I, I think all of the fundamentals that are driving gold right now are still very much in place. Sh sure, we could see you know, a technical pullback. Maybe there's uh, some interest in defending the all-time high. Um, but, um, but I think all of the fundamentals are still in place. Um, the uncertainty associated with COVID. Right. The, uh, the global response to COVID in terms of liquidity, Yes. Uh, central bank accommodations, uh, fiscal accommodations. I mean, the world is awash in liquidity right now. Perfect. Yeah. The 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 dollar uh, is under pressure, uh, which uh, tends to uh, move uh, inversely to gold. Yeah, it's, um, it's been almost a, a tick for tick at, at, at a couple of times this week. So you're 100 percent there. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, I, I I don't really see. Uh, uh, much of a headwind ahead of us, uh, and uh, I think that uh, uh, that that two thousand dollars is probably in the cards. I, I don't know that I would uh, say necessarily this week, but um, given the proximity to the all-time high, uh, it is certainly feasible that we do set all-time highs this week. Yeah, I like that. And, yeah, the uh, but let's put it this way: the potential is there. The question is, wh where is the resistance going to come from? I, I tend to agree with you. I don't see any major players coming in here selling product. I see major players talking about gold shortages right now rather than, you know, dumping gold. Um, three weeks ago, Russia came out and said, oh, we're selling gold. And, and you and I looked at each other and went, what? What are you talking about? You've been buying gold for 36 months. You're selling it. And then Pravda came out Friday and went, oh, by the way, we, we, we just bought a lot of gold. And I went, okay, that sounds better. Yeah, so, uh, more... you know, I, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 the Putin's the best, baby. He knows yeah, how to trade right. this market, you know? That's right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about volatility. Um, silver was up almost 18% last week. $3.42 higher 
for, oh, for you the call week. that volatility. It was the sixth consecutive higher weekly close. Um, the, the high uh, for the last week was 23.25. Uh, it was a seven year high. Uh, we haven't seen that level since September of 2013. Right. Holy market on fire. Uh, and oh, by the way, you and I talked about this weeks and weeks ago. There, let's put it this way. There were a lot of shorts in the market. I have a feeling uh, they've already shoveled dirt on their equity. You know what I'm saying? They're they're gone. Yeah, I th yeah. Uh, when you see a move like that, uh, quite quite frequently, it is uh, short covering that uh, generates yeah. that volatility, and yep. and uh, that there certainly seems to be the case. But uh, uh, clear and definitive breakout of the range, I would say. Yep. Um, and I think the last time we shot a video, we were talking about 24 bucks. If I if my well, I was saying, you know, 22 looked like resistance and uh, kind of went through 22 like a hot knife through <laughs> butter and right. just kept right on a rolling. So it did indeed. Uh, I think you were the one talking a higher number and you proved to be right. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. We're, we're not there yet. But again, you know, it uh, it seems uh, uh, that the, the momentum is certainly there. And uh, while we might, uh, you know, you could reasonably argue that we're, we're overbought at this point, I, I, I think that uh, the, the buyers are going to step in on any kind of uh, uh, pullback and, yeah. uh, and, and drive this thing higher. And, 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 you know, as you might imagine, with uh, uh, silver up 18% and gold only up a measly 5%, that that ratio is under a little bit of pressure still. Well, you and I have discussed this ratio for a while and we knew that a correction was coming. It was a matter of when we, we have the correction now. I think what we need to do real quickly is back step to your points. They're all valid with silver. And with silver, actually, we've seen a, a great slowdown in production, even more so than gold. And it's getting harder and harder, at which I couldn't believe three weeks ago we couldn't find product and we're scrapping to find anything we can. Yeah. And it's going to get worse. And I think that at some point, uh, there's just going to be a giant pinch for one ounce silver coins, at which point uh, anybody that happens to have rounds is going to be in the driver's seat. And it looks like that's going to be very soon. Yeah, it, uh, it uh, you know, I we had talked about uh, in recent weeks that the uh, the retailers of bars and coins were were probably in a far better position this time around, um, just based on the flows through our hedging platform. Uh, they right. were stocking up and stocking up in a big way, um, but the 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 demand has been uh, pretty in, insatiable, it seems. Uh, and uh, premiums are, are are back up. Yes, um, they are. There were rumblings of uh, the U.S. Mint uh, calling a, a confab on Friday. That's uh, correct. Probably with yeah, the authorized dealer that. network. Couldn't and, confirm it, Pete. That was just yeah, rumblings. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I wasn't able to confirm it either. I, I, I yeah. made a couple okay. calls, uh, but uh, I was uh, traveling. But I, I will, I will tell you that all the people that use uh, uh, Tornado, which is Zane and Precious Metals hedging platform for metals, uh, have had a very good year in, in this last two weeks. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's like they they really caught up. A good up year, them. but not an easy year. People uh, well, like we're scra are scrambling. We're scrambling. Are scrambling uh, to to maintain inventories and have yeah. product yeah. available to sell. So you know, kudos to them. You know, yeah. I, I think that they've, they've done an amazing job given the the market uh, conditions that they've had to deal with. Um, sure. And uh, uh, I will tell you something uh, we saw uh, with our dealers, a lot of people at $22 came in and were selling their coins and the guys were gobbling them up. And now at 23 and looking at 24, they're pretty happy campers. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the PGMs. Oh, sure. Uh, platinum was up 9.6%, uh, uh, more than 80 bucks. Uh, yeah. last week. So uh, a pretty clear and convincing range breakout. We've been kind of tracking um, a flag formation on the daily chart. Right. And that broke out, not only broke out of that flag formation, but satisfied the objective off that flag formation, um, like within a day. And uh, it was the fourth consecutive higher uh, weekly close, um, set three-month highs. Um, 
and uh, or actually have five month highs in yeah, I was just platinum. Say, you know, yeah, and uh, that palladium that uh, palladium down. hasn't been a slouch either. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah. again, more than nine percent. Uh, right. You know, one hundred eighty seven dollars higher last week. Uh, fourth consecutive higher weekly close. Uh, three month high was in right. palladium. Um, so all of those metals are, are are looking really good. I mean, in palladium, we're sort of the midpoint of the, the very broad range from the all time high to the COVID low. Uh, we're right. right about in the midpoint of that range. And we've been up up once before, right after COVID um, struck, and uh, uh, so you know we're we're still, like I said, you know, well within the well, the, the broad I, range. I'll share with you that to with our scrappers, all the people that all the all the guys that are doing scrap metal recovery that hedge with us and come to us for copper and platinum palladium to to uh, hedge and mitigate risk. Uh, are now we're kind of circling the wagons here. We've got big meetings all this week, and we're going to start identifying points where some of these guys should start laying them off because they're really well, well off. And I'm I'm thinking some of the they should start realizing some of this profit just for running their businesses. You know, they've had they've been holding a lot of inventory, and and we're thinking. There, that there's going to be some points here that look attractive, and we're going to go over that in, in some meetings next week, along with our friend, Dr. Copper. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so uh, let's, let's, let's talk about silver and the PGMs for just one more second, because sure, I do want bet. to make a point. A lot of uh, the stimulus money is right. being directed towards green initiatives. Yes. Uh, electric vehicles, solar. Um, that's you know, a good point. Uh, and, and so that bodes well. You, I mean, you talked a little bit about the supply side on silver, uh, yeah. but this bodes very well for the demand side of silver, the industrial demand side of silver. And, you know, and then obviously the, there's the, um, the, the investment side of the equation as well. Uh, so, so silver is a, is a much less expensive uh, option than, than gold in terms of yeah. in, in, in uh, you know, uh, hedging, uh, risk and and so forth and 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 platinum as well um, is inv you know attractive from an investment perspective because again it's you know it's the much difference between two, between twenty two hundred and potentially two thousand yeah twenty two dollars yeah. really you know obviously you're going to see a lot more money and a lot smaller money which doesn't have the opportunity to use the expensive things such as gold or platinum. And uh, they're saying to themselves, you know what, the silver doesn't look bad. So I agree with you 100%. We're seeing liquidity coming in from investors as well as some of this liquidity that's out there on the industrial side. People saying, you know what, maybe this isn't a bad point to enter the market. Yeah, so Plus, I think it is, you know, you know uh, speculative to, to to some degree, but it makes perfect sense that if you yeah. know you're going to throw. Um, you know the trend has certainly been towards green initiatives for for some time now, and yeah. and uh, if you're going to be printing money and throwing it out there in various uh, uh, towards various initiatives, uh, I think that uh, the green initiatives are are going to get their fair share and perhaps then some. Um, so that that looks really good. Now on to copper. Um, yeah. Copper was sort of the outlier. Um, it, was. it was. That's, it was that's what I found so interesting. Right. It was down yeah. fractionally. Um, it was the second consecutive lower weekly close, um, sort of rejected from the, you know, the, the next key resistance level is sort of 293 to three bucks. Three and, bucks uh, is the number for me. That's the magic yeah. number. Yeah. And we didn't, we didn't get up there. No. Nope. Um, but, um, but it's not exactly selling off with a vengeance either. So what, what do you think on copper? Well, I, uh, for all of our hedgers, it, it, which includes our scrappers and our haulers and our, our car crushers and, and our, our net uh, cathode people, uh, we're seeing, uh, we put out a recommendation that we felt that maybe around $3 was an advantageous level. And as it proved, a lot of our guys got back to me this week, Pete, and said, you know what? We kind of followed your advice, and so far it's working out very well for our company. We got in at a good level. You know, what are we going to do? Now we have to review it next week and, and take a look and see consumption versus production. It really looks like Chile, uh, Peru, 
and Mexico are going to continue closing their minds down. They were talking about it. Their unions are in confab talking about it. So if we see them close down again, we could get another pop in copper if there's none around. China, which consumes 61% of all copper produced, has been very mixed. And we're not getting a good solid signal from China yet. So that's kind of the fly in the ointment here. Right. right. Yeah. Well, again, you know, the trend is certainly your friend. You know, a couple yeah. of weeks ago, I, I mentioned a, like a short term uh, uh, potential double top. It never even got close to confirming that. Um, so there was a very, very brief pullback and it blew right through that resistance level uh, and was off to the races uh, and, yeah. and hasn't really looked back. Um, and again, except for maybe the last two weeks, but looking back just just fractionally, I, I call it more consolidative near the highs than than truly corrective. And, yeah, I like uh, consolidative. I, you yeah. know that 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 rings true. Yeah, so uh, yeah. It, that that trend still looks strong. And I think if you come all this way, you really got to give three bucks a, a real test, <laughs> don't you think? Yeah. I, I hope so. I hope I hope for our guys that it does because it's certainly going to help them a lot. Although you know, going from two hundred eight to three bucks, you know, a lot of these guys that were really suffering at these lower prices have been able to recover. So we're very happy for them. And and three bucks to me, I mean, I'm all for it. I you know, my number was three thirty three. If we broke through like three hundred five, three hundred seven, and there's certainly the potential is there. So. I, I think we really need to get some fundamental solid numbers, get it out to our guys, and hopefully it says that China's you know coming back into the market with two fists again and and trying to build up and looking to do some infrastructure work there. Yeah, well, with the uh, the last trading week of July right ahead of us here, um, we've got durable goods out on Monday. The um, the market's expecting plus six point five percent, but the whisper seems to be a lot higher from from some of my contacts uh, that I used to uh, to work with. Uh, very right. strong e economists are uh, predicting eleven percent uh, durable goods, which would be well. Uh, it's the COVID thing. Everybody's at home. The, they're looking at their old washing machine, their worn out dryer. They're they're. I mean, we're seeing durable goods sales moving and. Uh, mm. Uh, old computer parts and and you know people upgrading and for for their Zoom conferences and whatnot. It's uh, it's been interesting. It's kind of uh, yeah. a converse thing, you know. And and we might see further confirmation of that this week. Um, on Friday, uh, we'll see personal income and PCE out. Um, personal income is supposed to see a little bit of a drop, um, but uh, PCE is supposed to be another solid six plus six percent. Okay. Um, and that's coming off of uh, plus 0.82, percent in May. So it, it speaks to the point you just made that uh, that people do have money in their pockets. A lot of it, yeah. thank, thanks to uh, our fine government, sure. uh, and they're spending it. And, oh yeah, uh, they and, are. Uh, so that uh, that kind of bodes well for the economy, even in the face of this uh, resurgence of of COVID. Uh, so right. we'll be looking at that on Friday. Um, we get. Um, Advanced GDP on Thursday, uh, so uh, that's uh, kind of our first look at uh, Q2 GDP. You recall okay. that uh, uh, the, the last number we saw for Q1 was minus 5%. Get ready for it. Market expectations, minus 34.5%. A third. Where did More you than get a third. that number? That is the market expectation for advanced wow. Q2 GDP. Really? Um, so uh, obviously we are in recession. Yeah, that's uh, what it says. Make no mistake <laughs> yeah, about I it. Mean, you know, whoa. Uh, but that is that is a huge number. I, I don't know that we've ever seen anything like that. Uh, I mean, even I should look back whoa. at the Great Depression, uh, but I don't think it was anywhere close to that um, quarterly. I think during the Depression it was. I'd have to look at my 1920, 1929 numbers, but it, there it would... I would I would argue with you on that. I think it was lower, but uh, we'll yeah, see. I'll look back and I'll uh, I'll put it in a crawl or something under the video. Yeah, do that. Do that. Okay, that's um, a good idea. And then the other big thing is uh, the Fed meets uh, two day meeting starting on Tuesday, so we'll get the uh, the policy statement on Wednesday, 
expectation is that they'll hold interest rates steady. Uh, yeah. There may be some tweaks to liquidity uh, provisions, uh, but uh, kind of yeah. steady on, uh, I think, is uh, is the way to go. And Well, I think Paul has kind of changed his stance from when he initially came in, and I think he's he's playing ball with this because the American people need him. And I think he's come to the realization that a whole lot of nothing at this point is exactly what needs to be done because this recovery just, you know, is, is going to be a, a little less of a V, I think, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I think that about covers it. I and, do too. Uh, it was a, kind of a long one today, but uh, yeah. well worth it. We had it a lot of stuff it. to cover. We had two <laughs> weeks to fill in and, right? and, and uh, plus the fact that, you know, we like to get out to our scrappers and our, and our bullion dealers. So we had to get them some numbers. So we're apologizing if we ran over, guys. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Well, yeah. I wish you a great uh, trading week. Uh, I'm Peter Grant with Zaner Metals in Denver. Pete Thomas in the Financial District of downtown Chicago. Be sure to give us a like, give us a follow. So this will be in your mailbox. And uh, thanks for being with us. Yeah.